USA, USA, USA. We have won the Nations League Cup again. Everything's okay. There's nothing to see here. Dos Acero. Hello again, my old friend. Three Pete. Oh, the world will never be the same. The game the world was waiting for, almost as much as that Washington Post investigative report into Kim Mulkey. What a win. What a vibe. What a difference 90 minutes makes. Yes, Mexico were extremely poor. Yes, the Nations League. It's a bit of a toupee of a football tournament. I don't want to hear any of that tonight. We needed this. We crave this. Our winning run against Mexico continues since 2019. An important win, a ray of light amidst the looming darkness. Oh, and tonight, we feast. And I'm not here alone. I'm here with a remarkable man, the co-creator of Ted Lasso, who is about to unleash the quite incredible show March 29th in the Lodge Room, Los Angeles, Elvis Prestello. Yes, the Elvis Presley impersonator who only sings Elvis Costello songs. We'll talk more about that one for sure because tonight's been a bit accidents will happen. Peace, love and understanding. It is incredible to welcome the man who I take the Go Go USA series, essentially a love letter to the history of the US men's national team. It's a joy to welcome my friend, an Arsenal fan. Everything he touches wins. It's known. Happy Dosa Cero, Mr. Brendan Hunt. Happy Dosa Cero, Raj. What a, what a lovely, lovely day it has turned out to be. Who knew? I have, Who knew? I have one quibble with what you've just said. I have one quibble. On. I don't think we needed that, per se. I don't think we, not as bad as Mexico did. That's for sure. That is for sure. But you can't really measure your... My mother always says, Brenny, your own toothache always hurts the most. Um, so, yes, Mexico, my God, how they needed that. I think they'll fire at least one coach tonight. Maybe even the new one that they hire after Lozano. They'll already coach him uh, by the end of the night. But, Brenny, we won the He Believes Cup. Is it morning again in American football? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. We're going inside baseball from jump. <laughs> it's big. It's a big night, huh? <laughs> I mean, the thing, you know, I mean, like the Burhalter out people are going to look for any excuse to like turn something into a controversy. But even if they'd lost this, like, he, I mean, this tournament has happened twice. They've won the first two. You, 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 you only win two out of three. What kind of what kind of big deal is that? You know, all eyes are in Copa America. You know, keep your. Keep your Burhalter out powder dry for the Uruguay game, for heaven's sake. Um, but it's sure better to win and to have another, uh, you know, sporting and then I guess, for lack of a better word, political uh, humiliation of our rivals. Um, uh, half that's enjoyable. Uh, that they've been they've been embarrassing themselves on the pitch against us. And I'm not the effort's been there. The effort's been there, but a lot of Dos Aceros can't look good in the. Uh, in uh, in El Mundo, and um, and then yeah, the stuff going on off the pitch is um, is to see a uh, you know a great organization be brought down by by its worst fans, and that and it's a dark day in, in Mexican football. God, it is, it is, it is. Um, we were but enough about their toothache. Yeah, the F there, Valerie Bennett say F there, toothache. Um, I will say, Brenny is not the only person joining us tonight. You can too, dear listeners. Come up right now. Ask us questions about this Nations League final. Seismic. New football fans. Yes, it is more important than the World Cup. You can ask us about Elvis Prestello. You can ask us just about life. Here's how. Scan the QR code in the top left of your screen. Take you into a Zoom with our producer, Jake, who is currently shirtless. He's got a huge Stars and Stripes tattooed around his belly button. Um, but don't be afraid of him. Just come on, ask your questions. It's audio only. Do not be afraid. We'll get to your questions later in the broadcast, but get in line now to make sure you get in there um, with your question or comment. Hit us with a like, jump in the chat, come and be with us. Um, let me start very quickly by raising a quick third first Michelo Bolter of the night to 17-year-old Endrick, the Brazilian prodigy. I can't believe he's still so young, partially because, well... 
uh, that is young. And B, somehow his move to Real Madrid seems to have been sealed about 15 years ago. But he got his first ever goal for Brazil. Enough to see off a pretty ragtag England side at Wembley for their first defeat since the World Cup. And it was lovely to see how genuinely emotional this kid was. Kid had ground his way out of a childhood that included time homeless, time in an orphanage, now on the cusp of true global wonder. That is football. That is Brazilian football. Uh, may that goal be the first of many. But enough of that, Brenny. Let's get into let's get into tonight by starting with. I don't know if you can do this. Take me back to how you were. You know, there's been a challenging couple of days. It was a low, low night last Thursday. The Jamaica game, which ESPN called one of the worst performances in the Burhalter era. There's winning. There's winning ugly. This was a bit winning sad, even though we emerged intact. Just we needed an own goal in the 95th minute and 24 seconds to survive with all of our talent against a threadbare Jamaica team, uh, lacking pretty much all of their best players. Brendan, that was a tough watch for all of us who love and dream and just want to soar uh, thinking U.S. men's national team thoughts, right? Um, you know, I'm, I'm always just looking for the, uh, for the lesson or the bright side and like, Hey Rod, you know, even England gives up a goal to San Marino in the first minute every now and again, like it, it happens from time to time. Um, and it's just a reminder, like even if you're playing a, a team that is down or a team that you don't feel threatened by, it turns out everyone on that team is a professional soccer player. Uh, and if you let your guard down for, uh, for 45 seconds, you're going to be punished. And then you're playing, you know, you're playing on the back foot for the whole rest of the game. So a good reminder to our to our not quite as young as they used to be youngsters, um, but yeah, like as you started that run, there's like oh, and the, that couple of days miserable. Uh, I'd already forgotten. I'd already yeah. forgotten about those first ninety four minutes. They matter not any longer. Haji Isn't Wright, amazing he really football. Does. Football can just and Haji Wright is the ultimate Anita Tizer. I mean, that is the joy of football. It is. It's be a goldfish. We are all goldfish, as Coach Beard would say. Yesterday, our butts had teeth marks, deep ones, the kind you normally have to pay for. That's what that game felt like. And it created a slightly turbulent vibe going into this game. Alexi Lalas, and I don't normally like to say those two words together. I do oh, love no, the he's human... usually a thermometer of calm and, uh, yes. and the lack of bombast. I'm sure this was yes. real, really well thought out, whatever he said. He... He, he said, I mean, he, he, he's a public figure who is teetering towards kind of like the, the troll territory on occasion. Uh, but even he'd been tweeting up a storm of U.S. fans. There was one today that was actually heartbreaking, but expressing the kind of wheels within wheels sentiment that we had a lot of uh, in the run up to this game. Um, at Thad Castle for Life was the guy that he retweeted who said, I think we need to root for Mexico to win so that Greg Berhalter can be removed ASAP. Very sad, I know. That was the tweet. Um, and was the in kind of inversion with an inversion that we've got to. Um, but much of it was washed away, as you said, by the goldfish of the announcement of the starting lineup tonight. Five changes for the US, most between a semi-final and a final in team history. Gio, Hadji Wright, that Simon and Garth uncle of US team harmonies were given starts. Balogun dropped. Tyler Adams' first start for club or country in 380 days. Uh, we'll get to him in a moment. Serginio so Dest, back from suspension. Old man Tim Ream, the Betty White of football reinserted at the back. Not a single MLS player in the team, it should be noted. Can you describe the Brendan Hunt mindset at kickoff? Where were you on the scale between, you know, I, I think this is a leading question because I know you, you are the force of good, but like on the excitement scale, on the optimism scale. Um, so um, uh, our lovely friend, uh, uh, Christo, is in town, our man who, uh, who plays uh, uh, Daniel Ross, the great Christo Fernandez. And um, he had put the word out to see if some of the gang could get together and watch this game. Now, um, I have a, a three-week-old baby and... Uh, and still a three-year-old as well, so the kickoff time made it impossible. There's no way I could even have people over. The timing, four o'clock game maybe, six fifteen game impossible. But I lamented that I could not watch this with Cristo because I want to watch a, a U.S. Mexico game with Cristo at some point. But it can't be one that's too important. You know, like a uh, Gold Cup final. I don't know, Cristo. I don't know if we have to do that. A World Cup match should it ever happen again? No chance. I want us to stay friends. 
But uh, as you say, the Nations League Cup final, the He Believes Cup final, come on yeah. over, Cristo. Come on, I'll open up some of the tequila that you had sent to my house and whatever L tree tie in that you, your beautiful heart thought I would enjoy. I'll, I'll, I'll re gift you. <laughs> so I was feeling like only good things can happen because even if there were bad things, they kind of wouldn't matter. Um, but it sure was good to see Tyler in the lineup. It was good to see Haji and Gio, uh, Gio in the lineup because, you know, good play should get its rewards. And, um, and uh, you know, a lot of times I think you expect Greg to be like, no, we stick with who got us there. You know, same starting lineup no matter what. But good on him for making changes. I, that, I was, We're playing Lala and Balboa. We're going to play Lala and Balboa. <laughs> <laughs> Our rocks. Yeah, we're going back. We're going, we're going back to P6. Um, so God, I love this that you're like, no, I won't watch anything important with you. But yeah, Nations League final. Well, they've got a cup that looks like genuinely. If you uh, speak to AI and say, "Show me a football trophy," that's pretty well what comes up. You're like, yeah, get your ass over here. We'll watch this one together. I've got nothing to fear. I mean, this was Mexico. Yes, dread rival Mexico. Um, but, you know, they, they, as you said, crave victory, needed victory, even more intensely than we did. Their manager, uh, Jim, uh, Jimmy Lozano, who's been under immense pressure, 14 games into his managerial stint, uh, which is an eternity. I think you have to measure Mexico managers' tenures in dog years. Um, I mean, the pressure on. First ever game against the United States. His team entered on a six-game winless streak against the U.S. men's national team. They're not won against us since 2019, which is utterly, utterly remarkable. I think Christian Pulisic was about six or seven uh, then. Um, and the thing that does separate these two teams really is the pressure that the two managers are under. In the U.S., yeah. we kind of put our coach under zero pressure, as we'll discuss, for, for very many reasons. The wider public... Um, in Mexico, you come in and on day one, that pressure's turned up to 11. And I don't know about you, Brendan, but I, I will never get over my shock than on a home game in the United States when this game of football has never been more popular in our nation, Premier League rating soaring. Um, that there's just, you know, it, it feels like the game is in Mexico. Our players getting booed during warm-ups. This was, this was hostile terrain. Yes, but not in an unfamiliar way. You know, they would have they would have felt this coming in. Now, maybe the scale of it, certainly playing in Dallas in that, you know, you know, triple white airplane hangar they got down there. Um, uh, what what was the attendance tonight, actually? Um, you know what? I have no idea, but I'm watching the United States lift the trophy, the AI generated trophy uh, before a very empty stadium, just packed with the remaining wonders who are the American outlaws. I'm seeing terrace after terrace utterly empty. God bless you, uh, those that came in uh, for this beauty. But a lot of very, I'd say, oh, my God, there's Geo lifting the trophy. What emotions he must be feeling. Um, and into the game, new strategy for the United States, which was not conceding within 30 seconds. I like that. Frenzied fair. Football played with, with helter-skelter intensity from the air off amidst the noise, the theatre, the adrenaline. A lot of slop, to be honest, in the early exchanges. Floodlights flickering on and off, which is which is a new invention for football, making it a bit like a Blink-182 concert. Um, it felt very early on. A lot of effort, a lot of in madness. It could only be described as extremely conquer cafe the early exchanges. Yeah, there was little attention to all the small things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I had. That's like I had. passing. <laughs> <laughs> it did. I mean, it was slop, but it appeared to be slop that that we were looking better in yeah. uh, for the most part. Like, it still felt like, ah, gosh, I don't know. Like, you know, Lozano's coming in for... Uh, for a, a little more, uh, a little more pepper than necessary, um, but like no one was getting fussed. Like the U.S. did not seem worried about a single action or moment in that entire first half, even not yet having the lead. Yeah, I mean that game exploded into life in f the first five minutes. Anthony Robertson flicking to Geo, who kind of tossed it 
Um, we're just uh, oh, an insouissance, I think is the word. I'm not even sure what that means. Uh, towards a speeding politic, one of my top three favourite politics, who bore in on goal with a deft dance, a chower with his curls are flowing. Pretty sure there's a slight Andrea Gassi thing going on with that headband. I can't prove anything, but when I look at him, I just feel there is. With his curls are flowing, made himself big. I don't know about you, but that moment, that moment gave me such confidence, Brendan. It made my nipples tingle. Yeah, it really, it really did. It also allowed me um, a moment of a, because, you know, I was never a player, uh, Raj, so it's all foreign to me. So, like, little things will happen, you know, before a match where I, where I get there early enough, I'm watching, and, the, and they do some stretches that are, like, you know, like from a Christopher Guest sketch, you know, like uh, just <laughs> some synchronized swimming stuff next to each other, like like thighs going past ears. And, um, Corky and go. Then if they didn't do those stretches, uh, Pulisic doesn't even get near that goal. Like he, he really curled himself up into a into a dancerly position and um, and and, uh, and and deserves reward for it, frankly. But yeah, please continue with the comedy warm up. Soccer, you, you, know, you need. G- g- Corky might be the, uh, the the number ten this team's looking for. <laughs> uh, yeah, go on. I, I was genuinely screaming at that point. It was like Greg at the wheel. How does it feel? Um, just the hunger of the American attack in a, those early exchanges. Christian Pulisic never more up for it than in these kind of games in a U.S. jersey against Mexico. Geo buzzing, Hadji pounding away. Um, the United States had the edge, as you say. I mean, they felt, I have to say, in the early exchanges, felt much more cohesive in the open play um, than against Jamaica. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, you're getting a more open team to play against. Uh, which certainly helps, but but yeah, there was no there was no rocking of of the confidence. Um, you know, it's pretty entertaining half, despite the, the being mostly nil nil. I love you. You actually given away the the secrets of Mexico. They should have just dropped into a low block to undo us from the very off. But the game became spicier. The tackle started a snap. Seemed to take the United States out of the game a little. Actually, they focus on the kung fu fighting aspects. Um, and with that decrease in focus, Mexico started to probe a little in transition. I think Chavez had the best chance, uh, but the rest of the first half felt like a lot of sound and fury, signifying nothing. A lot of CONCACAF quality of football. Gio Reyna was oddly playing so deep alongside Tim Ream a lot um, in, the, in, in the first half that we had no one capable or willing to slip his quality of passes in that final third. Our IQ was just much lower up there without him. The touches that our most dangerous players had were really at famine level. Um, we reduced a Serginho Dest channeling the spirit of Diego Maradona slaloming through the entire Mexican back line, thrashing just over. I mean... Sergio Des, it's so funny that he's at your house tonight. To me, he's like he's like Danny Rojas come alive. He's like, I'd like to give away joy for free. <laughs> Man, when he is when he, I mean, look, we don't we don't have to recreate that that red card, which was remains inexplicable. One of the <laughs> most insane red cards I've ever seen from a seasoned professional who has played <laughs> at Barcelona and AC Milan, <laughs> and uh, not exactly a continuing uptrend. PSV Eindhoven, they still have a European Cup. Um, but that was nuts, that red card. And so to see him have such a good game and show him, you know, he didn't get the goal uh, on that lovely shot. Well, it was a lovely play that the shot was a little, little off. But um, just, just a reminder, like, still here, everybody. Still here, still Serginho. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to fuck some people up. Yeah, John Oliver said about Jack Grealish uh, that he thinks there's a little boy trapped in a grown-up's body like Tom Hanks in Big. And I'm pretty sure it's the same for Serginio Dest. That like inside, it's just like a seven or eight year old boy just making all the. I'm gonna boot the football into the crowd now. <laughs> like we were looking for a reason, and then I'm just like gonna do some some like nutmegs for no reason, and then thrash the ball miles away. Like why we're all like, why would he do that? And the honest truth, the I think the rational thing is he probably does have. I think there is a, like a there is just a Tom Hanks child inside, but then. On the cusp of half time, Brenny, the moment. Oh. Ball fed innocuously from Weston to Tyler Adams, who was so bloody deep. Honestly, um, would Caitlin Clark have shot from where Tyler Adams picked up? Would she even have? Even Caitlin she... Clark would have been given pause. Yes. No. Tyler Adams has gone gone above and beyond 
My heavens. It was great. And the replay, too, like when Weston has the ball, it's like a camera from the corner flag. And, you know, almost like a Tarantino Easter egg that's going to come up later. <laughs> Tyler's blurry in the back, giving the full, I'm open. And to some degree, Weston has to be like, yeah, buddy. I, all right. Fine. <laughs> fine. Go for it. But oof. Oh remember remember um, when he played for uh, Leipzig? Yeah. And he had a winning goal in the second leg quarterfinal to get to the semifinal. Yeah. yeah. And it was a great shot, but it took a wild deflection. deflection. He's still, yeah. still credited with the goal, yeah. but a wild deflection. I've always felt like that was like his his maybe career highlight, but with a with a you know a bigger than Roger Maris asterisk on it with that deflection. Asterisk erased. It is gone. That goal was magnificent. Ochoa was lost. Benny Feilhaber, step aside. There is a, a new friend for best ever U.S. goal in a final against Mexico. What what a fantastic moment. So happy for Tyler. And as you say, his first start in roughly uh, 10,000 days. Welcome back, my man. I mean, it was amazing, Brenny. It was a... It was like an American Vincent Company moment. Like no one thought that man was shooting. Vincent Company says about his great goal for Manchester City. He could hear Pep Guardiola shouting, "Don't shoot! Don't shoot!" Um, and he shot anyway. And it was the shot of a madman, the shot of a man about to get subbed out uh, because of minute restrictions. And so you could not give two craps. You know, starting from zero, got nothing to lose. He just pulled his foot back and went just, I'm pretty sure he's, oh my God, he's on television now with his beautiful son. He just shouted, allow me to reintroduce myself. And just went full on Michael Bradley exhumed from 2017, also against Ochoa, who I don't think will look greatly upon his move there. That shot three feet high and rising, which made him look, let's just say, every day of his 38 years old as he scrambled across his line. The ball just span away from him at light speed, a net buster. I mean, Zaffa could never, Brendan. That's what I wrote for that goal in my notes. <laughs> No, hold on, hold on. Caitlin Clark made it. <laughs> <was convenient. laughs> and I will not have his greatness question. I will not have. I will not stand for Zavar Erasure on this show. You know, what must he have felt to have had 478 days away from the United States team? His first start of any kind in 380 days, two hamstring operations. I mean, the yeah. agony, real agony, real doubt, real loneliness to return and score that kind of goal that forever will be woven into the tapestry and highlight hype videos of this epic regional rumble. I can't imagine what that must feel like. It's, it's been so, it's lovely that his return is having a high point so quickly, even if it's a high point that is like out of character or not the kind of high point you would have would expected or hoped for. But like he had been gone for so long that when he came back on for Bournemouth, what, just two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago? It yeah, was like, yeah, oh, right. Weeks, yeah. I, got to say, I forgot about that. the Premier League. Yeah, but I almost forgot that he was, you know, a Premier League player still. And uh, like, right, Tyler Adams. Okay, well, it's going to take him a while to get fit. Nope, my man <laughs> is back. <laughs> and it's limit, et cetera, et cetera. But woo. Uh, yeah. indeed, by the way, by the way, I'm waiting for this to be confirmed. I'm pretty sure we think we took him off to preserve his hamstring. I think we took him off to protect Mexico. That's what we did. We did it for Mexico's sake. They didn't want any of that smoke. But to watch him charge towards the sideline, embrace the whole squad, his band of brothers, um, put his <clears throat> hand to his ear, tell the Mexican crowd he couldn't <clears throat> hear them anymore. Um, oh, at oh, so you're getting the Roger Cross. Folks, when, when, when the these episodes are edited out, Roger, he gets some water. He's got a little uh, sleep apnea I'm genuinely, thing. I'm, on, genuinely, but... I'm genuinely emotional for that man. He has been through so much. He has been to hell to be injured yeah. as a footballer. You know, you are out of everything. Other footballers don't want to be with you. And for him to reconnect, re-announce at Jay Dawson, 1575 said, Tyler Adams, he's so American, he's named after three presidents. Oh, I wish Tyler Adams was president. I really do. He's two goals in 38 appearances for the US, both against Mexico. This one, though, it was as if you don't know where I'm from, dog, was a single highlight of football. Off he went at halftime, replaced by Johnny Cardozo, Sergio Real Betis. Pressure really on Mexico, as you've said. 
Lazar now the coach, desperate to prove himself to the fans, team to prove themselves to themselves. But Bora Chuki Lozano cut inside and thrashed. It was Henry Martin who barreled through and then crapped his pants with a goal gaping. They offered very little. And how the US made them pay. Pulisic cut inside from the flank. Chipped the ball coldly over a prone defender like a yeah. man who's been watching messy vids. Slapped a ball across the Mexico bat line. It was half cleared. And it dropped to possibly... The worst player if you live south of the border. The best player if you live north. Gio Reyna. I don't know how to describe this. It was like watching... I mean, you're a television man. You're a movie man. This was this was the end of Karate Kid. This was the crane kick. This was what Mr. Miyagi taught our oh boy. The ball just flew into the corner. An incredible strike. First time of a natural talent. Um, just so giddy to thrive given the chance to shine once again brenny you know well, my head goes to because yes like as someone pointed out here he has scored now in every nation's league final um against mexico every time um and he's still uh 19 20 where is he at now we he's 21 he's 21 21, he's 21. and you know uh, it's still like waiting for his body to uh to to hang out for a whole season and when he had that moment of greatness, which, you know, he's had so many moments of greatness at this point, all I could think is, when when is his soccer hair going to catch up? When is he going to get full, <laughs> full soccer hair, goatee, frozen tips? Like, which way is he going to go with it? It, 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 it? Everything's before him. Everything. He's an artist. B1. Can't wait. He is an artist, B1. By the way, can we get a quick update? What was said to... Christo Fernandez, Danny Rojas, in this moment, were you a were you a good host? Were you a? What, what, he was like, not here. Describe. Oh, he was not here. He was not here. I that's that was the thing. Like I, it would have been a perfect game to watch with Christo, but alas, with my uh, oh, I thought here. you were. I thought he'd come to you. Was drinking your tequila, uh, and you were giving them the ha ha. The Simpsons. No, treatment. I mean, oh, I mean, it God. would not be out of character for Christo to come to my door right now just to <laughs> congratulate me on the victory. Um, <laughs> And then you know, hold my baby while it pukes on him, uh, which it did on me. I got I got puked. At, here, here's my overshare for the night, Raj. Um, um, you know, one the three year old is you know crying because he doesn't want to go to bed. Um, yeah, okay. uh, someone's got to feed this baby. I got to watch this game because it's my job. My wife goes. My wife, we're not married yet, but we will be someday. She goes in to take mm -hmm. care of uh, the three year old. I got yep. um, the three week old feeding him. Okay, great. Watching the game. Burp, burp, burp. Vomit. Vomit all over my Sardinio <laughs> desk jersey. It's fine, and um, but then when I'm holding him, when I'm holding him, <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, uh, do farts have lumps? Because I think that brought a that brought a friend. All right, lay him down, watching the game, changing him, changing him, changing him. I can't even know what happened. Like, oh my god, that is that is amazing. And then I feel, I feel just moisture, just moisture, because not only have I been puked on, but I'm being pissed on by my three week old son. With is it. Is it pneumatic or hydraulic? Just the sheer, the sheer force of of Sometimes this stream. Very, yeah, the arc. It was, I dare say, it was Reina esque. It was Reina esque. It was magical. <laughs> it was beautiful. You just landed the plane. I've got so many questions. By the way, your forthcoming children's book, "Do Farts Have Lumps," is going to be, I think, a bestseller, particularly in Japanese. Um, but um, can we be buried in that story? Is of all the players that you chose to get a jersey for, is that true? Did I hear that Brendan Hunt got himself a Serginio Dest jersey? My choice for the World Cup was a Serginio Dest. Yes, because he played. He played for Ajax. He's from Amsterdam and uh, or Almira, really. But like, yeah. I got into my football in Amsterdam and Holland, and for there to be a Dutchman on the team now, like, yeah, come up. Mein Freund, yeah, gezellig, fantastisch, schitterend. Yeah, yeah. My man, oh, Johnny is ref. Johnny ref. Um, <laughs> God, this is amazing. I'd love, I'd love him to come to Comedy Bang Bang. That would be genuinely to see Sergio Dest do improv with you. I mean, Penny, that is my you? new. I've always you wanted to get. I've, I've always wanted. My football dreams have always been like I'd like to go and watch Boca play River. You know, they're very simple, very basic. Now. My football dreams are seeing Serginio Dest do improv with you. Ain't comedy bang bang. Be amazing. But off he roared, mobbed by his teammates. What a feeling, Brenny. Just 39 minutes. 
for Gio across five games for Nottingham Forest since he arrived. All that drama with Greg Berhalter, you know, to deliver two assists last game, then this goal less. I mean, it's fascinating to see Greg again boosted by Gio Reyna. That's borderline like Oedipal drama. Um, and it was sincerely lovely to watch Greg and Gio hug when he was subbed off. I mean, yeah, uh, it was like seeing Voldemort hug Malfoy. It was like, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was It was also nice to see shots of the uh, the elder Reynas in the, you know, you see that they were there. To whatever degree they've been, Hassan and Angrata in not just the international game, but the club game in the U.S. in the last uh, year and a half or so. Um, because in, in the end, this whole saga is about mistakes made by a bunch of people. And, um, and you know, it would be, <laughs> I would not be walking the walk of that TV show as part of it if I, uh, if I did not um, believe in forgiveness. And, and, you know, Claudio, for all the insanity of what was happening in Qatar, he's still, he's still family. He's still, you know, he's still one of the main, main trunks of the, of this forest of trees. So, so it was good. It was good to see him and, uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I won't speculate as to what degree of repair may or may not be possible between them and the bear halters, but it was good to see him there. I love that. Nature is healing. They did have him behind glass. I did notice that, which I don't know. But this is, by the way, can we just say this is now very much Geo's team? That is one of the big outcomes of this Nations League thing, as much as it's Polisics and Tyler Adams. Um, and there's a lot of complexity. Um, as you talk, it was fascinating watching Greg get into a battle of words with Jesse Marsh after the Jamaica game, you know, defending Gio. Um, you know, we've got to remember this. Gio was the gentleman who, before the last World Cup, we were told would not get major minutes. It all had very, we're all trying to find the guy who did this, Tim Robinson in a hot dog suit vibes. Um, but I was like, are you watching Nottingham Forest? Um, and here's the truth. Um, it was an amazing night for Gio Reyna. It was an amazing yep. night for Tyler Adams. Two footballers who, in different ways, needed it very, very badly. Got it. It is joyful. It is wonderful. It is important for the future of this US team that those two true talents did so well. Um, but Mexico... And it's also like, hey, Forrest, your move. You know, it, it's one thing if he can't get into a game uh, for Dortmund. But like, uh, uh, Forrest, how's it going? How's it going right now? There's no, there's no room for this cat. Brendan, stop you helping them. Room. Brendan, as the Everton fan in me is saying, please stop helping them. <laughs> Let them just make their terrible decisions and do their thing. Um, but Mexico are a team in tatters. It's astonishing to watch them. It really is. I mean, they're a brave jersey design in search of confident footballers to fill them. I mean, that can fan base. Yeah, can we talk? I mean, the, okay. the fan, the fan base taking pride in unleashing the homophobic chants, which in 2024 is just awful. Um, I mean, it's always uh, a hard I question. What, uh, did, uh, did, yeah, so, I mean, I, we'll talk about the jersey and the football. Have you wanted? I what I can't work out was was the United States good tonight or Mexico just a feeding force in every regard? Hit the jersey question first if you want. Um, for the crack research squad and this incredibly terrible run <laughs> that um that uh, Mexico is having against the U.S. right now. Um, were they wearing the actual three colors that are their name for any of those games? Because certainly in the last Nations final, or was that the Gold Cup, whatever it was this summer, I think they were wearing like their purple alts. And now they have these new jerseys that are like, like my mom had that bedspread. Like who is this? Was there a, was there a contest on Etsy? Like what? Hey guys, you're called the three. Where the fucking three, especially if you're getting your ass kicked up and down the block every goddamn game. <laughs> Jesus Christ. To see oh the green, God. white, and red used to be intimidating, and now you've pissed it away. I'd love it. I'd love it to see to get into jersey design. That would be incredible, Renny. <laughs> you at, are you Adidas? No. Are you Nike? No. Are you... Are, are, are you are, we're Etsy. We're <laughs> Etsy. We're Etsy. <laughs> Proudly, proudly, yeah. Etsy. proudly Etsy. We've got we got the quilters of Northern Minnesota direct, uh, the, um, designing our kit. Do you not like it? I thought it was kind of beautiful and kind of brave. I thought here's what I'll say. I thought the jersey was the best thing about Mexico tonight. I thought they were terrible. I think there's the foot. I mean, it, you were watching. It was like watching England in the um, in the early nineties. 
uh, where the footballers did. We used to say in England that putting that jersey on, it was like it weighed like chainmail, and they were just dragged down. I mean, it was just that was horrible football. Um, the talent gap between them and the United States, the fan base. I mean, as I say, reveling. If that's all you've got, I mean, that's just it's yeah. just a sad. I mean, it's it's awful in its own right, but in context, I mean, just truly that you, you're tenaciously clinging onto that as your symbol of pride is just is just humanly heinous. Um, well, I'm on the jerseys only because, again, I don't think they've worn their regular jerseys much in this whole run, and it's like <laughs> you're you're overthinking it for fuck's sake. Um, and yeah, Some they were tactics. terrible. And two things about being terrible: one is is there's no like there's no greater exposure of your desperation than to be given a penalty that is then overturned with the coup de gras of a yellow card for diving. Like who, who are you now? And all of it, like the, the you know, desks, you know, uh, ball handling, uh, Tyler Adams wanting to shoot from 35 yards out. Um, it speaks to a generation that is no longer intimidated by Mexico at all not to even a little bit of a degree. And like even our best teams of old, you know, from 94 to let's say 2010, you know, still we're like, oof, okay, here we go. We got to play, we got to play Mexico, everybody. And that is, that is, that is fading, which then allows us to save that intimidation for the likes of Uruguay and, uh, and Brazil and Argentina, whoever we may get this summer. But this, this, this is the key point. Um, you've just nailed it completely and absolutely. Uh, I mean, we're trying to work out, was the United States good tonight or was Mexico just a fading force? I think you just nailed the most important point. This is a joyous night, a joyous night, mostly of relief, looking at the players, um, just this yeah, this wonder uh, that they're experiencing in the post-match. The honest truth is, was it were we good or were they terrible? It can be both. And I'll say this, I said this before the Jamaica game, our talent pool is immense. It's never been deeper. Um, there is now a gulf, I believe. Sounds like you do too, Brenny, as someone that's watched this game for a couple of decades now. There's now a gulf between the United States and Mexico. I don't know how you say mind the gap in Spanish. Um, but my God, there is an enormous gap. And God, credit Greg. I mean, he thrives against Mexico. Is it played seven, won four, lost two, drawn one? Uh, I think his record is. But your point is the right one. Me We're in a world in which we can say this. Mexico are not the United States marker anymore, right? Is that the? Is that what we're saying? No more than Wrexham yeah. are really like, yeah, we're a League Two team. I mean, we yearn, I believe, as United States fans, as United States players I talk to, to play the big dogs and thrive against them, to take the field, as you've said, against the Brazils, the Argentinas, the Uruguays, the Englands, Frances, Belgiums, Germany's, Netherlands, and step on the field and believe we can win. Yeah, um, it's it's great. It, I mean, it speaks to, in a very palpable way, it speaks to the raising of the bar. And yeah, to some degree that is, this is a, you know, perhaps a talent drought for Mexico and a, a generational blip and maybe they'll come back around, but you know, it's not going to come back around in the next two years. And obviously 2026 is where all of our sites are, are headed toward. And you know, it, 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 it sure feels like progress. I mean, Mexico can't even, Mexico can't even get it, get it, get it going to get a, a late red card anymore. A late fuck you. We lost, but here, here are my fucking spikes. We nuts. It's weak. It's, it's weak. weak. Yeah, it's weak. I mean, if that is where was it just for yeah. attempt to injure someone of old? Yeah, where is that? Where is that? Um, where is that desperate attempt to to horrify a nation? I mean, we don't even know who you are anymore, Mexico. If you're watching, <laughs> we don't. Um, but my God, Jamaica, we still fear you. Anyway, three peat baby. <laughs> The Nations League is ours. <laughs> we do. We do. Tri Nations. I'm, 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 I'm going to reserve Tri Nations. Oh, is that already a thing? Oh, darn it. <laughs> tri Nations it is. I mean, the Nations League is ours. I mean, that is that is lovely. I think the pride of winning against Mexico, again, Dosa Cero. I mean, you, 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 this is something that you talk about with beauty that means, I think means a lot to you, the Dosa Cero in itself. We should take one second to just 
to just raise a glass to that. There was, I remember when the US qualified for the 2014 World Cup, I was in Columbus. Uh, they were winning 2-0. We, we got a penalty. Clint Dempsey stepped up to take the penalty and missed it. It was a terrible penalty. And I've always said to Clint, I've always said, you missed that on purpose, didn't you? To preserve the Dos Acero uh, scoreline. And he always swears he didn't, but the look in his eye tells me he did. Like, there's something holy and, and like a sacrament around the Dos Acero. I mean, to win by that score tonight, it does mean a lot to you, right? It it's just great. It, it's it's just to rub it back in, especially since it was taken away um, from us. But ever you know, with the you not qualifying for twenty eighteen, and when they lost in Ohio of all places to Mexico, and you know, I think Rafa Marquez even scored to like really, really. It really felt like in that qualifier, which was would have been twenty seventeen and twenty sixteen, like oh no, we had our chance at Titus turn. We'll, we will never be back. But now it's back to Dos Cero as as a, as a matter of rote. I mean, ba-ding, 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 we're on consecutive Dos Aceros now in finals. And a, a sidebar, I think this speaks to, like, what is the Nations League? Do we want the Nations League? Because, like, the minus <laughs> of the Nations League is, and this speaks to someone's uh, comments earlier, is all these countries doing these fucking Nations League means that we can't have any, like, intercontinental friendlies anymore. Like, we can no longer schedule Holland or, or Italy um, because we got to go play, uh, you know, uh, bless their hearts, uh, yep. uh, St. Vincent and Grenadine again. Yep. Um, but two teams, two, <laughs> two teams of one. It's the only way they can beat us. Um, yeah. But you know, we, we're now that we have this, we're in the middle of this four-year chunk of no World Cup qualifying. So at least it lets us play Mexico in meaningful games, um, which is great. We always love that, you know, the, but not at the Azteca, which would be better. But right now, the the only existent, the only reason for the nation leagues to nations league to exist is to give us USA Mexico games that we are not otherwise being granted. What? So you ask, what is the nations league? Which I think, I mean, I'd love to hear from people in the audience. I mean, if you told me when we failed to qualify for the 2018 World Cup that we would go on to win three nations leagues, <laughs> I would never have dreamt it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, what is it? It's like the Florida Cup of international tons. Is it like, is it like winning an Independent Spirit Award? <laughs> we won the Atlantic Sun Conference tournament. <laughs> Three You'll times never sing in a row. that. <laughs> what is it? Oh. Can you can you put it into a real? Con- is that what it is? I'm trying to be serious and I can't be. But I mean, what is it? It's like. I don't know. I mean, it's like—is it like cracking the USA Today book charts if you didn't make the New York Times bestseller list? You're like, yeah, it's bestseller. What 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 were we listing on with the USA Today? At this point, it's just like you know, at your at your annual family uh, Fourth of July picnic, (laughs) where when all when the adults go to bed, there's the secret beer pong tournament in the basement, and it just gets down to you and your little brother three years in a row. Uh, well, yeah. come on, man. Are we really celebrating this? Might as well. It's 4th of July. What else matters? I tell you, what else? What you've just described is it the dank basement. No one's watching, but it's it's fratricidal. I don't even know if that's a bloody word. It's life and effing death. And that is it. It is football in the upside down, and it is delirious. We're going to take questions, but I do. I believe like a combination of the... What was it? The Florida Cup, the and and the Dosisero, that is all that is good for all that ails you. I mean, it is the the real trophy. I believe is probably individual. Uh, the real trophy is probably that you know. For now, I mean, this is it. It's like Greg had said before the game. He said we see this as an opportunity to create a le- a legacy. For this group, uh, a legacy. And that we said, we love this Nations League. We love what it represents. And I was like, what does it represent, Brendan? Because, like, genuinely, I am old enough to remember when Greg Berhalter was two seconds away from everybody calling from his head against Jamaica. And he ends up a winner tonight. Um, I mean, to me, much of this tournament was about the players making their claims for Copa. You know, you had G right, yeah. you Geo cementing his crucial, crucial, like get that whole debate. No, 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 all of that. He has won. He put he's put everything. We are hashtag we ride with Geo now. What does it mean tonight for you, other than relief? And and Greg silencing the critics, dot dot dot, 
for now. Yeah, I mean, that's the you're, you're spot on. It's really just about Copa, like, because it, it actually doesn't mean anything. It was terribly enjoyable um, and will be remembered for a long time. But it means, you know, Tyler Tyler can feel like he's more back than before. Um, uh, Gio knows 100%. Though he might have suspected that after the last Nations League that he's, he's, he's essential. He's part of the team and everyone's back on his side. Um, but yeah, guys like Johnny Cardoso, I thought Cardoso played pretty well in not the most difficult assignment, I guess, in a manner of speaking against this team, <clears throat> but like Cardoso was playing himself into being Tyler's backup pretty firmly. Um, but other than that, yeah, I think we're mostly seeing guys who are going to start anyway. Like Haji, hopefully is going to be on the plane. Um, you know, Pepe and Sergeant still are going to have some things to say about that, but, um, but Wright's shown himself to be informed. It'll be it'll be interesting. And there are there any more matches be, before the Copa? No, it's just those yeah, pre-Copa yeah. friendlies. There's, there's right? two there's two two friendlies before the Copa. I think they're playing Brazil, in Brazil and, uh, and Colombia. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. We, I think we we got to go to one of those, Brendan. We got to go. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get a game. Uh, but for Greg, this was a reprieve. I mean, by the way, I bet he wishes the old soccer chant "Can we play Mexico every week?" was really true. He is the boss. Uh, of Mexico complete and absolutely you're right the Copa is the everything um, I do want to acknowledge that, I mean, there's a couple of things number one I've been in the English press pack during a tournament and it's remarkable they eviscerate their national team manager we don't have that here for the media you know we lo- I think we long for our team to be culturally relevant to become major um, you know to, to soar and we almost you know we, do, we dream so quickly again let's dream again tonight um, I think we long for our team to be culturally relevant, to dominate, to play and dominate March Madness, to become that major, to have home games against Mexico, which have a vast majority of American fans. Um, it's still going to be a build, all of it. But you're right, uh, the Copa, the Copas are everything. We've got to get out of the group, right? That's now that's now completely our everything, Benny. Well, I think we've got to win the group or else we get Brazil slightly earlier than necessary. Um and so that's going to come down to the Uruguay game, you know, and maybe it does come to goal difference. But July 1st in Kansas City against Uruguay is very much in my sights. That is a big, big, big one. Not to look past the other games against, uh, I'm sure they're a very good team. Bolivia, they're yeah, great. It's about Uruguay. And, um, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to that. God, uh, last thing, and then I want to take questions because you've been so patient tonight. Um, all our fans, it's a great audience tonight, a joyful one, a triumphant one. Um, by the way, the soccer US fan base is a hilariously wonderful bubble, a glorious bubble, a passionate bubble, long dreaming bubble. Um, we know there's a lot of agony here. Um, you know, even Alexi Lalas is tweeting uh, dark thoughts, which is amazing. I mean, that's like... It's like the biblical God deciding to destroy the world that he's created. <laughs> but um, there is something hilarious. I do want to acknowledge that and talk, talk this with you. I know a lot of the U.S. fans fantasize about a Mourinho or a Klopp coming in to coach the U.S. in this World Cup. I just want to acknowledge it's so fantastic. But it's like it's like Isaac Asimov writing science fiction, isn't it? It's like... It, there's as much chance of Klopp coming in to to soaring to take the US. I'd love to be wrong on this, but it's like Jimmy Dugan, Chubbs Peterson, um, or Coach Beard coaching us, right? Or Nate the Great coming in to take us. These guys are not coming in, are they? You know, I putting aside the fact that we have a coach uh, right now, I wouldn't have thought so until um, doing my uh, Women's World Cup podcast with Rebecca last year. Um, or was it the Men's World Cup podcast before that? Either way, talking to Rebecca at some point, she was, and she, um, as her heart was like, it's it's a big job, actually. The U.S. hosting the World Cup, shouldn't you be looking at people like, you know, she she dared mention Guardiola, um, which is, of course, adorable. Um, but, like, God, I mean, here's the thing. For the Burhalter out crowd, like, your last, your, your Alamo right now is the Copa. You need an absolute disaster, the Copa. You need you need to knock it out of the group. Um, and let's say that happens and Burhalter is gone. I do think the sky's, you know, Rebecca's convinced me. I think the sky's the limit for what kind of pedigree you could get for just this, just this two Just years. a quick hit. 
By the way, yeah. I, I, there's a thing I can't understand, Betty, because it is a massive job, not just to take the US into this tournament, but the commercial possibility to be the face of the game. What this game really needs at the moment in America. I mean, we've got it on the women's side. Emma Hayes coming in is exactly that. She's loud, articulate, yeah. emotionally intelligent, super smart, charismatic. Um, and this, that's what this job offers is for somebody like that. Like maybe you won't make all the money in the world, but you to be the face of this game in this moment, in this nation, you can print money forever. I can't get you Pep Guardiola. I can get you his brother, Pear. That's probably <laughs> what we're going to get down to. Uh, but a I'll, lot of I'll, questions. I'll say, I'll say this before we get into the questions is um, uh, because just to make very clear my position, I'm, I'm staunchly pro Greg. I think he has done everything asked of him um, from the beginning. And here's another uh, you know, bit of silverware in the trophy. Uh, no, silver in the trophy. Trophy and silver in the trophy. That's not the point. The point is, um, I also, I, I think he's doing the job. I think he's doing the right to stick around. But I also really hope we still have an American host. You know, as our as our head coach in 2026. And I think back to something Bruce Arena said. I think it was an interview in the New York Times, and we've talked about this before. <laughs> but it was a throwaway quote I've looked for, and I can't find it. But it was something along the lines of, "When we do finally." Win this thing, it'll be because, and I'm paraphrasing, we did it our way. Like it won't be because of subscription to some, you know, uh, foreign doctrine or, or philosophy. We will have found our own innovative way of doing it. We have found our own innovative way of doing so many other things um, that have improved the world. Um, and it's a bit pie in the sky, but I fucking love it. And uh, and also, like that World Cup is going to happen. In the 250th birthday of our nation, <laughs> like, let's let's do it right. Let's do it right. Can you just do your Bruce Arena impression for me before we go to questions? <laughs> Oise, I'm I'm sitting here by the phone. I mean, <laughs> you think no one's ever beaten Mexico two 0 before? Uh. <laughs> Some people do it not even in North America. You give them a chance. By the way, Bruce Arena's listening to this. He's going to call in on his birther phone um, and ask one of these questions. Because when you said it's going to be an American manager, he's like, oh, I know an American manager. Um, you're talking the language. language. Yeah, I know. Ah, oh, your questions. I'm reminded of how this works. I went to YT Live. You just have to scan the QR code in the top left of your screen or click on the pinned comment in the chat. Get in the Zoom with producer Jake. He'll tell you all you need to know. Lots of lovely questions. Let's get through them as quickly as we can. We want to honor everybody. You've been amazing tonight. Chris Ferris, who I believe is not feeling very optimistic after the Jamaica match, but is reborn. Chris, come on up. Tell us where you're from and what's your beautiful question. Rogelio, dos a cero. Cuidado con la brecha. <laughs> Bienvenue, Chris. Bienvenue. Oh, Chris, where are you, mate? Remind us. So, so when I talked to you on Thursday, I was calling from Houston, where I live, but I'm actually calling you from L.A., where I'm visiting my daughter in college, and we all went out to a bar here in L.A. to watch the game. And, of what course, bar? it was two to nothing, which is just glorious. What bar? Uh, it's Greyhound in Eagle Rock near Occidental College where my daughter goes to school. Noted. Carry on. Shout, shout out to the Greyhound. Um, yeah, no, it was great. Chris, that's all we needed to know. We were phoning to check in on your daughter, her grades, her time at Occidental <laughs> College. But ask your question, you beautiful human being, while you're here. Before I get to the question, just uh, Brandon slash Coach Beard, what a treat to be on the pod with you. My whole family loved Ted Lasso. We watch every episode and I'm just delighted to share this pod with you. So thanks for being here as well. Thank you, Chris. Cheers, man. So my big question is, I still think, I, I hear you, Brandon, that you said that you thought Coach Burhalter was still the right coach. But I feel like their, their, their style of soccer is possession without purpose, possession without potency, and the two goals that we scored tonight were just individual moments of brilliance from the players, not because of any kind of strategy or tactics or formation that the coach set up. And that was also true of the, the incredibly embarrassing win against Jamaica on Thursday. So how can we get more out of these players? How can Greg get more out of these players? Because individually, they're brilliant, and their individual brilliance is what's saving us from humiliation. What can we do differently if 
Brandon is right that we we stick with Greg through the next two years through the World Cup. Oh, that is a great question. How can we proceed to develop? How can we proceed to grow? Um, oh, Brenny, I don't know if you got an answer to that. I mean, I'm happy to to dive on in, but you go. I'm sure you'll it. have a better one. So let me get my shitty one out, please. Um, I mean, look, you know, being a being an international coach is not the same as being your your club coach. You don't get the daily interactions. Yeah. Um, but uh, but he's been their club coach for for uh, five years now. Um, so, uh, I don't, I'm just a little interested when people say like, all oh, these players have had all this personal growth. Um, uh, anyway, the coach sucks. Like, he, 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 is there, is there not the slightest possibility he's had some bit of input as to that growth that they've had in that time? Someone who has guided them from being of many of them to teenagers, to, to, uh, to pretty, pretty effective professionals. Um, boys to men, boys to men, if you will. And like, he's, he's done <laughs> Damn near literally every single thing that was asked of him. It would have been nice to beat Holland, of course. But yeah, I, I got I got I got no interest in uh in trying to find reasons to justify uh his his departure. Uh right. I mean here's I, I would can only build on what you've said. Listen, international football is not a complex game. That's the honest reality. It's That's a very true. simple game. It can't um be. It's not a club game. Uh, he's a he, he's a club manager, a manager, quite a rural manager himself. Who's been learning on the job, um, and I think ultimately the answer is his learning curve. Look, all the players when you speak to them, you know, they like him because he's been so supportive and nice to them uh, at times of struggle with their clubs in Europe. European coaches, this may not surprise you, they are not super supportive of their players' failures. Their mandate, believe it or not is not to support American players through their lows. Um, and Greg, you know, has gone to Europe as a player, and he knows how lonely it can be, how hard it can be. When you speak to the players, he's very much been there for them. Um, his, I think his great success um, is that he's rebuilt how great it feels to be with this U.S. team, which kind of was dismantled in that odd year after 2018 when they didn't qualify, and the, there was like just a a purgatory that the young players flooded in uh, and didn't really have that kind of leadership. And definitely Jurgen Klinsmann took a hammer to that before it. Um, but, you know, this thing um, about he's loved, I mean, you, you'll know this from film sets. Um, you know, there's that old thing, the, the Chaz Palamanetri, is it, is it better for, from, from is it uh, the Bronx tale? Is it better to be loved or feared? I mean, ultimately, the coaching thing, it's not clear. Like, Ange Postacoglio is not really in his players' lives. He definitely has a, a deep connection to them, but he's very aloof when they're not playing. Um, and so, ultimately, I think the answer is to simplify the style of football. This is not a club team. They can't play complex football. They don't need to. American teams often feel so inferior that we don't just try and beat teams. We have feel we have to play like you know, Barcelona at their peak or like Manchester City, complicated football. We have to dazzle as well as win. Here's what I'll tell you. Here's the great news. We have enough talent in this squad to do bloody well in major tournaments. Ultimately, we need to look at what Morocco did in the last World Cup, simplify the football, create a system around our best players, let them thrive. But this is a rudimentary, very pragmatic game, international football. So the short answer, Chris... Enjoy your daughter. Enjoy your time in LA. Um, is we almost need to um, play to our strengths, not try and overcomplicate. It's really Greg's learning curve uh, that's going to determine exactly how we do. And I have to believe. I've got to believe in these players. I really bloody do. On to Kevin Adams, who is definitely not Tyler Adams' long lost brother. Oh, but come on up and be with us, you beautiful human being. Oh, I only wish I was. Don't we all, big Kev? Uh, Don't we all? Where are you, Kev? <laughs> uh, so I am outside of Kansas City. Um, and what a wonderful evening it is. I, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say other than I don't care who you are or where you're from. I don't care what you did as long as you love me. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Kev, um, you're a beautiful human being and congratulations on building the first designated stadium for professional and only for professional oh, isn't that, women's football. absolutely exciting. I'm, 
you know, I'm. Kev, uh, you did it. You I, did I, it. I will be. Yes, I, I personally did it. And you also um, invented burnt ends. What's your question, you beautiful human being? <laughs> well, so one thing I have to point out and um, wonder is, first off, is was the Federation just like a genius and they've been fooling us all along? And the whole reason they had this tournament or this in uh, in Dallas was to convert these fans um, who maybe don't want to. Uh, have homophobic chants at the end of the game. Um, you know, give them give them a secondary option. Um, my second question would be, um, what was Geo doing as almost a center back? Um, I, I, you know, it, it seemed to work out, um, at, but it was super surprising. And then Weston was on either side of the pitch as almost a winger at times, and you know, it was it was like. It was something I had never seen before, and it seemed to work out, but it was certainly surprising. And I, I'd like to get your thoughts on that because it's it's something strategically that I just don't think we've ever seen before, and I, I'd like your thoughts on it. Kev, you beautiful human being. Brenny? I'm, I'm putting together a tactical diagram of my thoughts. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. What are we talking about? Come on. I say with all due respect to you, sir. Tyler Adams' brother. In the great city of Kansas City, Raj, take it away. I don't know. I th- I thought for the first half, I thought Geo actually thought we were shooting the other way um, than we were, and he was playing very deep. But he thought he was in the final third. The Mexicans fight. He was playing in between Chris Richards and um, and uh, and my friend Tim Reeve for a lot of the time in a very Italian style, the deep line. I mean, a Perlo kind of passer. Um, and God bless him. I think most of the passes he, I've got to speak to Paul Carr in the morning that he completed in the first half were actually to Tim Ream uh, with a arcing diagonal backwards. Um, but I think ultimately Mexico were pressing and he was the quarterback that was there to break the press. Um, sometimes football isn't about tactics. Sometimes football's about moments, particularly CONCACAF football. Um, and God bless him. Tonight we are... I mean, there is a ballad. There's an epic Greek poem that is Mexico, USA. And tonight, Gio, you know, was in the right place at the right time doing what footballers, great footballers do, which is making it look like the football can come to them. And when it did, he struck it sweet and true with all of that frustration, all of that anger, all of that self-confidence. It's magnificent to witness. If he hadn't, we'd be sitting here being like, talk radio, why is he playing Gio so deep? Sometimes football is not about that. Sometimes football, particularly international football, is about those moments. And God bless Joe Reina. We will sing your ballad long. That clip will be in every single promo for the next 10 years when these two teams uh, play each other. And uh, Kev, let's simplify, simplify, simplify. I want to take these two quickly because they've been amazing. Before we go, Felipe, come on up. Tell us where you're from and what's your question, you beautiful human being. Hey guys, um, I don't know if you guys can hear me. We can Am I sounding good? loud and clear. Where are you calling us from? Is it the dark side of the moon? Awesome. Yes, it is. I'm in Baltimore right now. Yeah, yeah, that counts. Yeah, yeah. Where about in Baltimore, baby? Um, I'm close to Glen Burnie area. Oh, the Liverpool of America. I love you, Felipe. Yeah. What What's your question, baby? So, believe it or not, guys, I'm a Mexico fan. I've been a Mexico fan my whole life. And this rivalry with USA has been up and down. And these past few years have been the worst I've seen since I was a young kid. I want to know, what is the step for Mexico players to be on the same level as the United States players? Because don't get me wrong, as much as I love the USA, the country, amazing, the people, awesome. But the United States national team just gets, it makes my blood boil. What can... Felipe, we'll we'll tell you, don't change anything would be our advice. Don't change anything at all. (laughs) Trust the process, Felipe, come on! (laughs) Just convert, just convert. Uh, Felipe, can I turn this into a question for you? Because I don't know the Mexican League super well. Um, But, like, um, it does seem... um, like there are a lot more uh, U.S. players in Europe right now than there are Mexican players. There are some Mexican players, of course, in Lozano uh, tonight, and uh, obviously uh, Alvarez, 
um, um, has had great success over there. Um, but, um, you know, it, it's almost like, maybe it, it almost feels like, and again, I'm speaking uh, as a, as a drunk man who is covered in his child's <laughs> vomit and piss, but um, it almost it feels like the moment that the U S women's team is in where like, we have been the capital of, of the sport for a long time. And uh, meanwhile, while we were paying attention in Europe, everyone got better. You know, the Mexican league has been the best league in America, uh, the North in North America for so long and, and home growing so many great Mexican players. It has the standard move. Um, does the Mexican league need to get better or do more Mexican players need to, you know, go to where, where the money is? God, that's yeah, a- I, I, um, go ahead, Raj. Sorry. No, no, Felipe, please. Who's your team, by the way, in Mexico? So I like Monterey. Brandon so, Vasquez is amazing. amazing. I don't know how he didn't get called up. But... I don't know either, baby. We didn't Cristo want to Fernandez is his favorite team, family. by the way. Cristo Fernandez loves his mother. Really? <laughs> Oh, God bless that human being. At least he's got something to keep him warm at night. Brandon Vasquez, <laughs> God bless that giant of a human being. I mean, Felipe, I'll tell you very succinctly, you are ca- I thought you were going to go somewhere else, Brenny, when you said you remind me of dot, 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 and you went to the U.S. women, which hurt me. Uh, I thought you were going to say you remind me of the U.S. men like around the you know 2015, where all the best American players moved back to MLS. MLS paid Ooh. over the odds for... Michael Bradley, Josie, Clint Dempsey, uh, they all came back. We didn't have enough play. One of the great reactions to 2018 started before then, 2017, really. But the young players all realized to be the best they could, they had to go out and grind in Europe, get to the best league they could. And and, and uh, um, Benny's hit it. Like there is, um, um, uh, Hurt Gomez talks about it in depth on Vamos almost every week. There's a comfort um, there's a commercial might in Mexico. The players can earn enough. There's like a softness, uh, a lack of adventure, a lack of audacity. Um, and until that changes, you cannot become a, a the best team you can be unless you force yourself into the best leagues you can be. Uh, but I didn't tell you that, Felipe, because I don't want anything to change. Um, and I did. There were, we had the Ice, uh, Icelandic Jamaican manager, Hamir Halmagrasson, on this show. Um, right before Jamaica played the U.S. And he said, one thing I'd like to say, please, USA fans, never let Greg Berhalter leave. Never change the 4-3-3. And when we heard it, we thought it was like praising us. And we were like, oh, my God, that's the nicest thing ever to hear that. But we realized afterwards he was like trying to lull us into a false sense of security. So I'd say the same to you, Felipe. Change nothing. Trust the process. Stay exactly with the whole everything that you've got now. And it will be perfect. Um, come be with us anytime, Felipe, you beautiful human being. You're asking incredible Thanks, questions that deserve deeper answers that we can give. But I want to make sure we get on our last caller. It's the mighty Patrick. Oh, from Evanston. Tough night in Evanston tonight. Evanston. Northwestern. Northwestern, oh, the Everton of, of, well, of sport. Well, I'm, I'm not. I went to Villanova, so I'm even sadder. But... <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, losing J. It it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's the NIT, and I just feel sad. Anyways, hello, Brendan. Hello, Raj. Uh, I, I felt a little sad, as Raj knows I'm an Evertonian, so uh, I uh, I felt a little sad watching the Richmond episode. It's the first time I ever rooted against Everton. So, Joe Max Less and Tim Howard were there crying with me while I was watching that episode. <laughs> See what you're doing to people, Brendan. You're hurting them. <laughs> I'm hurting them. I would never call him Joe Max Less. You blue shirt. Yeah, bitches. no, the Evertonians I'll call him you. that, so don't worry. We already I'll we had you. that covered. It's one of the great names in football, great nicknames in football. What's your question, Patrick, you beautiful human being? My question is, um, so is this really a so I think Greg, as much as I don't like him, Brendan, and as much as I agree with that he's done a pretty respectable job, especially getting the group together, getting them to believe, getting to buy in and get, making them feel comfortable in a home away from home when they're not in Europe. This is the first time these past two games I've seen him really be adventurous. He even went to uh, kind of a four, uh, a four, four, two, um, having Haji and Pepe playing off each other with Tillman dropping back a little bit. And it was a little interesting. It's similar to how he set up against England when, Surprise and surprise, Gareth Southgate couldn't figure out that when Harry Kane had to tell him on the sidelines that we were playing a 4-4-2. 
you literally saw Harry Kane going four four two to to Southgate. But nonetheless, it, are these tactical innovations actually showing Greg having growth, or is it as I fear something he maybe was forced into and didn't do of his own volition? I don't know from tactics. I've never played. I like you know I play FIFA, um, but I will uh, say <laughs> this for Greg in the Jamaica game. Um, he he started making dramatic changes earlier than I would would expect to expected him to do. You know, like for the guy who's a supposedly the uh, the stayed um, you know trust the process kind of cat. Like around the 60th minute, he's making a triple substitution, if I recall correctly. And like, all right, okay, well done. Way to way to way to way to see that the uh, the water's boiling and uh, get this thing going. Um, that's not even close to being an answer to your question, but it's all I thought of. I, I, someone commented that I had a big pour here, and it's gone. It's gone uh-huh. now, and it's my second one. So, Raj, really, why do you let me talk? Let's bring this to a, a – I, I just say, ultimately, this is one of the great – I mean, Mourinho used to ask, you know, if I, um, if, if I was losing uh, before I brought on subs – um, you know, people tell me I got the starting 11 wrong, but if I win the game with my substitutions, um, am I not a genius to make these adjustments? I mean, I'm sure Greg uh, probably felt, you know, the Jamaica game, which was an agony, a trauma, true trauma, um, a deeply profound moment. Um, ultimately, you know, it was Gio and Hadji, uh, two substitutes, one who wasn't even called up in the original squad, haters will say, but yes, those are the subs. Who made the changes? And we here's what I'd say, uh, and I want to close with this: we have we have the depth of talent, um, which is which is which is a thing of wonder that we've never had to draw on. We should absolutely um, revel in it. We should savor it. It should give us. This is not overblown confidence for the United States. We have the we have the raw materials to dream. The Copa is uh, is it ninety two days away now? Indeed. I think it's going to be a moment of true time um, in many, many regards. We will learn so much about ourselves. Um, I cannot wait to watch. That's the joy of tonight. It's made us all just like feel great again. We cannot wait to watch. I know the boys will feel great again. I can't wait to speak to Tyler Adams and hear how he experienced tonight. (laughs) So let's saw... um, I love all the calls. I love all the listeners. I love all the comments tonight. It's been a mad one. Uh, Brendan, I just want to ask you one more toast. We've had a long search here for a new nickname, which I know is in your wheelhouse. We nicknamed the 2014 team the Von Trapps. The 2022 team was the Baby Eagles. We know we need a new nickname for the U.S. men's national team for the Copa, one that can rival yeah, indomitable lions or the you know the Thailand, the war elephants. You know those are the those are the apex of world football. Uh, we ask fans for uh, great names, ones that could really take the field with confidence. We got a top five. There was a public vote. It was tied, Brendan. And I know you're a great nickname expert. Here's the two nicknames where we are. We've got the Gen Z Eagles, which I kind of love from the great Cameron McMurty. And we've got FC to Shining Sea, which I just think is, how that is not an MLS team, I do not know. Sporting FC to Shining Sea, they'll probably call it from Sean Parker. I don't know if you lean one way or the other or even have one in your heart of hearts, but can you put us out of our national misery? I have one in my heart of hearts and I'm on the record with it, but between those two, Jen's Eagles, Jen's Eagles, let's take it for a walk. The FC one, like, it can't be an FC... As a national team, those might work for me, though. I like, I like, of course. The, the <laughs> You're a strict it. constructionist. Are you a strict but, constructionist? <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm on the record. I think that this, the, their name should be the guys. They're, they're the guys. We're the only country where um, the men's team is not necessarily our default national team. Um, therefore, we might as well uh, uh, throw some gender into their nickname. Um, they're the guys. They're the guys. Here come the guys. These are the guys. Um, let's support the guys. Oh, God, now I'm even more confused than I was when we entered this. We will come to a ruling. We now have three possibilities. Um, but what we have is a night of nights. We have a conversation of wonder with you all who followed along every single second. But Brenny, I've got to tell you, we talk about through hell of high water, whatever the phrase is. I mean, not only have you gone at least three minutes since your drink ran out, 
Um, but you have to rekindle. You have been crapped on. You've been pissed on. Um, you have like watched us. You have suffered. You have thro- you have re- you are in your are you a human metaphor for this US team in your own right. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk, covered in vomit and piss. <laughs> I am Concacaf. It is. You are a Concacaf, and I've got to tell you, I've loved every single second, my friend. I can't think of anyone I would rather spend this night with speaking to you it's honestly it's been like leaving the greatest pogues concert of my lifetime listening to you all that we've been through to more to joy to joy to football thank you you beautiful to to do this when you've just had a kid i mean is really really remarkable testament to your love and fandom and i'm so glad to have spent this with you thank you mate anytime raj always a pleasure and thank you all for the questions and uh and for how much uh 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 you hate greg even though he does nothing but win because your hate only speaks to your love. So good on you. Oh my God. In another life, you would have been an incredible clergyman. Um, to more, to more football, to more doses, that is for sure. To America. God bless. Godspeed. Go, go USA. Courage. Come on, 